put a knife in my heart. I shouldn't be here. The lady brought you back. On the surface, it would seem that she did. But in reality, she had nothing to do with it whatsoever. And in this video, I will tell you exactly who brought Jon Snow back to life and why. <laughs> Recently, George R. R. Martin has revealed that Jon Snow, Beric Dondari, and other people who were brought back by the fire god himself, Relor, are nothing more than fire whites. Now, we have seen whites before, but only the ice kind, the kind that are raised by the Night's King. And it seems that Jon Snow has a little bit more of his own senses than these whites have. Beyond that, exactly what you see these zombies being raised from the dead, Jon Snow is exactly like them. So when you see Jon Snow, think of them. There is no difference. The only difference, as I said a second ago, is that Jon Snow seems to be in control of himself more than they are. They seem to be being controlled. But is Jon Snow being controlled right now that we don't know of? So let's get right into this. In Season 5, Episode 10, the person that we know as Jon Snow, the one that was raised in Winterfell as the bastard son of Ned Stark, was murdered by his people of the Night's Watch and left for dead after he was stabbed multiple times. And at this particular time, this person that we known and we seen in the show and read in the books as Jon Snow is dead. He is killed and that is it. That is the end of that character's story of Jon Snow. At that particular time, the person that is Jon Snow no longer exists. And this is what Kit Harington was trying to tell you and those many interviews he did during this off season, but nobody wanted to believe him. Are you dead? <laughs> yes. So at the request of Davos, Melisandre then performs a ritual that she has never performed before, and she does not even believe is going to work in order to try to bring Jon Snow back to life. And she says this herself that this is not the way it's supposed to be. The exact word is that this is impossible when she sees Beric Dondarrion brought back to life. How many times has the Lord brought him back? Six. Thoros tells Melisandre that he just prayed above Beric Dondarrion, said some words, not because he thought they would work, because they were the only words he knew and his friend had died. And then we see Melisandre basically do the exact same thing to Jon Snow. And both times, these things work. Now, why did they work? Melisandre then asked Jon Snow the exact same question she asked Beric. And she basically gets the exact same answer. And this is not the answer she's looking for. Afterwards, after they stabbed you, after you died, where did you go? What did you see? Nothing. There was nothing at all. You've been to the other side. The other side? There is no other side. I have been to the darkness, my lady. Now the fact that Melisandre asked the two people that she seen resurrected about the other side both times means that she must be taught that there is some other side. But for some reason, both of these people never made it to the other side. The only place they made it to was the darkness. So who rules the darkness? We know who does that. That is the Great Other. That is the person who runs the darkness. And that person, the Great Other, is none other than Blood Raven. Or should I just say, 
Brendan Rivers. Yes, Brendan Rivers, Blood Raven is the ultimate evil. He is the great other. And in this video playlist, every video you see in here, we'll say a couple of things pointing in a direction and proving to you that he is. So right now, let us focus on what we just heard, the darkness. Now the difference between the show and books is that Jon Snow, when he is stabbed, does go inside a ghost. His soul goes inside a ghost while his physical body is killed. Now that doesn't happen in the sh in show, but that does happen in the books. Now we see in the chapter of A Clash for Kings, Bran, from the future, communicating to Jon Snow while he is inside of his ghost. And the chapter goes like this. The call came from behind him, softer than a whisper, but strong too. Can a shout be silent? He turned his head, searching for his brother, for a glimpse of a lean gray shape moving beneath the trees. But there was nothing, only a weirwood. It seemed to sprout from solid rock, its pale roots twisting up from a myriad of fissures and hairline cracks. The tree was slender compared to other weirwoods he had seen. No more than a sapling, yet it was growing as he watched, its limbs thickening as they reached for the sky. Wary, he circled the smooth white trunk until he came to the face. Red eyes looked at him. Fierce eyes they were, yet glad to see him. The weirwood had his brother's face. Had his brother always had three eyes? Not always, came a silent shout. Not before the crow. He sniffed at the bark, smelled wolf and tree and boy, but behind that were other scents, a rich brown scent of warm earth and the hard gray smell of stone and something else, something terrible, death. He knew, he was smelling death. He cringed back, his hair bristling, and he bared his fangs. Don't be afraid, I like it in the dark. No one can see you and you can see them, but first you have to open your eyes. See? Like this. And the tree reached down and touched him. So we see Bran go back into time. And we know that this is future Bran because at this time in the book he has none of these powers. And we see that he has the third eye from the raven. So this, at this particular time, it would seem that Blood Raven had already been killed. So at this time, Bran is the three-eyed raven. He goes back and he talks to John while John is inside a ghost. And John right now is experiencing his own death. That is why he smells dirt. That is why he smells stone because he smells his body laying on the dirt and stones and he smells the blood that's what this scene is about so we hear Bran say this to John specifically don't be afraid of the darkness now we heard already from Thoros of Mir and Jon Snow that when they died they seen darkness so Bran is telling him don't be afraid of your death don't be afraid of the darkness. You know why? Because myself and Blood Raven, we have plans for you. We're going to bring you back to life. And that's exactly what happened. Now I'm telling you that Blood Raven is the great other, but make no doubt about it that Bran is training to become the great other himself. Now we must realize what that word means. The others are the White Walkers. So the great others are the great people who created the White Walkers, which are the Green Seers and the Children of the Forest. That is who the great other is. So right now, it's Blood Raven until he dies. And when he dies, it becomes Bran Stark. So why did they do this? Why did they bring these people back to life? It's very simple, people. They did this because they need avatars. They need bodies that they can go inside and take over and walk around. And that's exactly what we learned from Bran that he was doing with Hodor. And that's what the three-eyed raven, Blood Raven, wants to do to Jon Snow. He wants to use his body as an avatar for himself so he can escape the Weirwood Tree. Because the White Walkers are not here to kill mankind. The White Walkers are here to cure, to kill the people who created them. The children of the forest and the Green Seers. And because they have no numbers, they can't fight them off. They had no choice but to come clean to the humans, tell them exactly what happened, and now they're trying to hide behind the humans. Now, 
Don't think that Bran may figure out what Blood Raven is trying to do to Jon's body. And he may be the one to take over Jon's body in the end. And it would be Bran Stark fighting the Night's King. Because what you hear right here from Bran when he's talking to Jon in this chapter is the same type of speech you heard Bran give to Hodor when he was trying to calm Hodor down when he was taking over his body. That's exactly what's going to happen, and that is who brought Jon Snow back to life. So you tell me what you think in the comment section. Are we on to something here, or do you have a better theory? Better yet, let me know. Do you think that Blood Raven and Bran are the great others? Put it in the comment section, and I'll respond to anything that you put down there about that. And if you like the way I do this and you want to help the channel out, please... Thumbs up this, please spread this across the realm, and please subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace, and stay sexy.